This video is on internet protocols. Internet protocol has a task of delivering packets from one source to another based on IP addresses in the packet headers. For this purpose, IP defines packet structures that encapsulate the data to be delivered. It also defines addressing methods that are used to label the datagram with source and destination information. There are two ways of establishing connection before sending data from one device to another connection-oriented and connectionless service. Connection-oriented service involves the creation and termination of the connection for sending the data between two or more devices. In contrast, connectionless service does not require establishing any connection and termination process for transferring the data over a network. TCP Transmission Control Protocol is an example of connection-oriented and UDP, User Data Grant Protocol, is an example of connectionless service. Let's talk about connection-oriented service first. It is used to create end-to-end -end connection between the sender and the receiver before transmitting the data over the same or different networks. In connection-oriented service, packets are transmitted to the receiver in the same order the sender has sent them. It uses handshake method that creates a connection between the user and sender for transmitting the data over the network. Three-way handshake or TCP three-way handshake is broken down into three parts, SYN, ACK, SYNACK. The client first sends the synchronization packets to the server, and if the server accepts it, it responds with the synchronization acknowledgement to let the client know it's open and ready for communication. And then lastly, the client responds with an acknowledgement and the session begins. There's also FIN used to terminate a connection. In a connection-oriented service, handshaking is required before sending an actual data packet over the internet. It requires additional header parameter to ensure reliable communication between the sender and the receiver so it has extra overhead. Header size of the packet is bigger than the connectionless protocol. Connection-oriented is used for long and steady communication and where complete connection is necessary. Then we have the connectionless service. It is used in network system to transfer data from one end to another without creating any connection. It does not require establishing a connection before sending the data from the sender to the receiver. It is not a reliable network service because it does not guarantee the transfer of data packets to the receiver. Connectionless doesn't ensure all data are received, while connection-oriented does. Connection-oriented also ensures there's no congestion because data packets follow the same route. In connectionless data, data packets can take any route. Connectionless service is faster due to missing initial setup. However, TCP guarantees delivery while UDP doesn't. TCP is also able to retransmit data if it is not received. It is able to do an error checking. TCP is used for things like email or file transfers, while UDP is used for video conferencing or IP-based phones, and this is because video and voice chat doesn't really care about data dropping here and there. And they're more focused on speed. We talked about how we can establish connections using connectionless and connection-oriented protocols like UDP and TCP. Now we're going to talk about tunneling. Tunneling, also known as port forwarding, provides a virtual link between two nodes that are reachable by using IP. A tunneling protocol is a communication protocol which allows for the movement of data from one network to another. We're going to talk about GRE and IPSEC specifically. GRE is Generic Routing Encapsulation, and IPSEC is IP Security. These two are primary types of VPN tunnels that can be used in order to connect remote sites or users together. First, we have Generic Routing Encapsulation, GRE. GRE is a protocol that encapsulates packets in order to route other protocols over IP networks. It is a simple IP packet encapsulation protocol. It is used when IP packets need to be sent from one network to another without being parsed or treated like IP packets by any intervening routers. GRE tunneling is accomplished through tunnel endpoints that encapsulate and decapsulate traffic. IPv4 broadcast and multicast traffic can be encapsulated using GRE protocol, and it's also IPv6 supported. It's a straightforward and adaptable protocol. Numerous protocols are encapsulated in a single GRE tunnel, and it can connect multiple discontinuous subnetworks and is easy to debug. Basically, it's a protocol that allows one device to talk to another, bypassing open filtering systems. But this brings vulnerabilities. 
Biggest concern is that users can also use tunneling to sneak through a firewall using a protocol that the firewall would normally block. Wrapped inside a protocol that the firewall does not block such as HTTP. If the firewall policy does not specifically exclude this kind of wrapping, this trick can function to get around intended firewall policy. Then we have IP security, IPsec. IPsec tunnels are used to provide a secure connection between two devices. IPsec tunnels encrypt all traffic that passes through them, making them much more secure than GRE tunnels. However, tunnels can be only used to connect devices that uses the same protocol. IP security uses two distinct protocols, authentication header and encapsulating security payload. The authentication header protocol provides mechanism for authentication. It provides data integrity, data origin authentication, and an optional replay protection service. Data integrity is ensured by message digest that is generated by an algorithm such as SHA. And then ESP protocol that provides data confidentiality and authentication uses the same algorithms. But the coverage is different. Authentication header style authentication authenticates the entire IP packet, including the outer IP header, while ESP authentication mechanism authenticates only the IP datagram portion of the IP packet. I'd like to mention IPsec has two modes, tunnel mode and transport mode. Tunnel is the default mode where the entire original IP packet is protected and encapsulated by the IPsec header and trailers. Then the new IP header is prepended to the packet, specifying the IP security endpoints as the source and destination. Transport, on the other hand, only the payload of the original IP packet is protected. The payload is encapsulated by the IPsec headers and trailers. The original IP headers remain intact, except the IP protocol field is changed to ESP. And the original protocol value is saved in the IPsec trailer to be restored when the packet is decrypted. Normally, IPsec transfer mode is only used when another tunneling protocol like GRE is used first to encapsulate the IP data packets, then IPsec is used to protect the GRE tunnel packets. All right, let's compare the two. GRE is used when IP packets need to be sent from one network to another without being parsed or treated like IP packets by intervening routers, while IPsec ESP is used when IP packets need to be exchanged between two systems while being protected against someone trying to listen in or tamper with the data. GRE is mostly used for site-to-site -site VPNs while IPsec is used for remote access VPNs. If you're using GRE tunnel, you need to ensure that the firewall is configured to allow GRE traffic. If you're using IPsec tunnel, you need to ensure that the firewall is configured to allow IPsec traffic. If security is your primary concern, IPsec tunnel is the better option. If the speed is your primary concern, then GRE tunnel is the way to go. In a large network when routing protocols such as OSPF, EIGRP are necessary, GRE tunnels are your best bet. GRE tunnels are much easier to configure and engineers use GRE rather than IPsec VPN. GRE tunnels can be used to connect devices that uses different protocols, while IPsec tunnels can only be used to connect devices on the same protocol. GRE is faster, IPsec requires both sides to use the same subnet, while GRE allows different subnets. I'd like to mention that GRE uses port 47 while IPsec uses 50 for ESP and 51 for authentication header. In addition, IP security uses IKE for negotiations using UDP port 500. Port numbers are assigned to different protocols and services so that users will know how and what to access at the other end and to identify specific applications. They are also used to track session associated with that protocol. Ports are standardized across all network connected devices with each port assigned a number.